While I certainly enjoy playing retro games by way of emulation, there have been times where I definitely wanted to play with someone rather than just play by myself. After all, there are a ton of retro games that were built with multiplayer in mind, and if I'm being honest, finding a willing participant isn't something you can easily do when you have the urge to play. This is where an application like 5K scratches that itch. Not only does it act as a great front end for emulation, but it more importantly has multiplayer matchmaking support for all the available titles. What's even better than that is the fact that it uses rollback netcode, which means less input delay and a better online experience with willing participants from around the globe. If Fight Case sounds like an application you have been waiting for, then allow me to take you through an overview, installation, and setup to get you started. Currently, FightKate is available on Windows 7 and above, Mac OS 10.13 and above, and Linux. You will also have to provide the game ROMs and the system BIOS for certain games. Now, you might be wondering what emulators does the application support, and I've got you covered. FightKate supports three different emulators. The first emulator on the list is Final Burn Neo, and it by far supports the greatest amount of games on the application. Final Burn has arcade systems like Capcom's CPS, Neo Geo's MVS, Midway's T-Unit, Sega System 16, and Konami's Arcade System. These are just some of the arcade systems that are available. It also emulates console systems like Sega Genesis, Nintendo Entertainment System, TurboGrafx-16, and ColecoVision. And like with the arcade systems, these are just a few systems that are available. Next up is the SNES 9X, and as the name already implied, it supports games from Super Nintendo System. Finally, we have Flycast Dojo, which unlike the other two emulators, supports a ton of 3D hardware accelerated games. Flycast Dojo supports Sega Naomi and Sammy's Atomus Wave arcade hardware. It also supports Dreamcast console hardware. I'm going to be taking you through the setup of each emulator, but first we have to download Fightcade. Head to fightcade.com and download the application. For this example, I'm going to be downloading the Windows version. Choose what location you would like to have the application installed. I'm going to leave the default location, which is going to install the application to my documents folder. Once the installation has completed, we'll go to the folder location so that we can do an overview of folders and files. The first folder I want to point out is named Emulators. Here you're going to find the supported emulators in their respected folder. Each folder carries an emulator which you can open from here, but we're not going to do that for now as I recommend doing this in the Fightcade application itself. Another important thing to note is the folder titled ROMs. This is where you're going to be adding the games for each emulator. Now let's open the application. Go back to the root folder and click on fightk2.exe. If you're opening this application for the first time, you should see the login screen. Underneath the user and password area, you will find the create an account option. Once you have registered your account and signed in, you should see this basic screen. The bottom left will show your user status. If you're interested in having a customized icon like mine, you'll have to go to Gravatar.com. Make sure to use the same email you registered for Fightcade when setting up things on Gravatar. Currently, I have it set to away, which is represented by the orange circle. If I click on the user icon, it will give me the option to switch to online or log out. For now, I recommend keeping yourself on the away status until you have set up all the games you want to play on Fightcade. Before we get started on testing games, I want to take you through some quick navigation steps. To start searching for games, select the magnifying glass icon located at the top left. This will initially bring up a few recommendations that are categorized by popularity, platform, favorites, and more. If you have a specific game that you're looking for, you can select the search bar located at the top and type in the name of that game. For this example, I'm searching for Golden Axe. As you start typing the name in search, Fightcade will immediately start the search with results shown below. If you can't see the full name of certain titles, just hover your cursor over the game and it will show it below. Hovering over a game will also give you the option to join or favorite a game as well. Now I'm going to join Golden Axe. Joining a game will add it to the left side bar. This is known as a channel. You can simultaneously be in three channels at a time. If you want to join more than three channels, 
then you're going to have to become a Patreon member. Once you have joined your preferred channel, you can select it and this should bring you into the room for the channel. Here you can see people who are waiting to play. You'll also see flags which represent their current location and bars which represent the current signal strength. If you hover over the bars, it will give you an estimated ping. If you see an exclamation sign by the bars, this means the player in question may be using a Wi-Fi connection. Now before you start looking for people to play with, you definitely want to make sure your games are working first, so it's time to start testing games. Let's start with a Final Burn Neo example. The ROM set you need for Final Burn Neo is version 0.2.97.44. Once you have the ROM set, it's as simple as placing it in the ROMs folder of the emulator. After you have added the ROM to the folder, head back to the FightCade application. For this example, I'm going to test the final fight 30th anniversary hack. Once you have joined the channel, make sure you have connected your controller, then select the test game option located at the top right hand of the screen. If the test is not successful, you might get an error message. Oftentimes it will tell you what is missing. You can also look at the top left to make sure you have the correct naming for the game ROM as well. Once you have confirmed the game is in working order, it's a good idea to start going through settings. One of the first things you definitely want to do is map your inputs. Doing so ensures that you'll be ready to play the minute you get an invite or you invite a player to join you. Select input located at the top right side of the window. Select map game inputs. You can select each game input by double clicking it and pressing the preferred button on your controller, but I recommend you map just one initially to see what your controller is identified as. Once you have confirmed the controller name, you can then do an auto mapping of your controller. Select the first empty box below the mapping section, then select player one. Move to the next box and select the controller name. In my case, it's gonna be joystick zero. If you don't see your controller name in the list, then you'll have to map the individual buttons. The last box is your analog or joystick control. The normal option is for basic 8-way directional movement. The absolute option, to my understanding, gives you more character control. So for example, if you slightly push the analog stick or joystick lever to the left, then your character would move at a partial speed. If you push the analog stick or joystick lever even further, then your character would move at full speed. Lastly, there is Auto Center, which is highly recommended for racing games as it helps negate drifting. Once you have your preferred options, then you have three choices below. Use preset, which will just change the inputs for the current game. Make default, which will make your selection default for all games that have not been configured. Or save preset, which creates an INI file for the specific hardware that the game uses. So in the case of the current game, if I save the preset, it will create a CPS.INI since it's using the Capcom CPS hardware which means any CPS game that hasn't had controls already mapped for it will attempt to use the preset, saving you time for mapping inputs. I still recommend you check your games to ensure the save preset is working as expected. If you want to toggle the screen in full mode, you can select this option or just use the hotkey Alt-Enter. You can also select the auto switch to full screen after loading if you prefer to start the game in full screen. Another option that you may want to consider using is the run ahead option. If I'm correct, this option is currently exclusive to the modified version of Final Burn Neo. Just remember that using run ahead requires a good CPU to use. More information about run ahead can be found in my video at the top right hand corner of this video. Lastly, there is the resolution option for both horizontal and vertical games. Currently mine is selected on the correct resolution, but as you can see, other options are available. Depending on your video card, lowering or increasing your resolution can improve or affect performance, so just be aware of your hardware's limitation. Once you have everything set up, you can go to File and exit out of the emulator.
Now let's set up the SNES 9X emulator. For SNES ROMs, it's recommended you use the MESS ROM set. Like the Final Burn Neo ROMs, you just need to add your ROMs to the ROMs folder in the SNES 9X emulator folder. For this example, I'm going to test Biker Mice from Mars. It looks like the game is working as expected, so I'll go through emulator settings. Click on Input and select Input Configuration. Click on the first button to start mapping, and it will automatically take you to the next button until you set them all up. If you want to make changes to the current game display, click on Video and select Display Configuration. Here you can do things like change the graphics API or add custom filters. Once you have all your preferred settings, then go to File and exit out of the emulator. Now let's set up the final emulator, Flycast Dojo. For this one, I'm going to give you two examples for adding ROMs as setups are going to vary depending on the game. For the first example, I'm going to run a Dreamcast ROM. First, move your preferred game into the ROMs folder of Flycast. Like before, you should be able to look the game up on Flycade and test it out to make sure it runs. Initially, you will be met with an options menu. For now, I would suggest choosing the start game option to make sure the game is running. Once you have confirmed the game is running as expected, you can close the window and run the game again so that you can set up your controls. I'm going to go over that in just a minute, but first let's go ahead and set up a Naomi Arcade ROM. This time around, the setup is going to be a little different. You may have noticed the first game I added was a CHD, and if you watched my previous video about setting up CHDs, then you know you have to set them up in a certain way sometimes. For this example, I'm going to set up Capcom vs SNK2. There are two files needed to run this game, the cvs.zip and the gdl0008.chd. First, I'm going to add these files to the ROMs folder. Once they are transferred over, then you want to create a new folder. You want to name this folder cvs2, which is the same name as the zip file. Once it is named, you now want to drag and drop the gdl008.chd into the folder. Now you are all set to test the game to see if it runs correctly. One thing you want to keep in mind when dealing with Flycast Dojo is that you can have a game that runs on both Dreamcast and Naomi Arcade hardware, and it's more than likely the ROMs are going to be different.
Now let's go through some setup. Start the game again and select the settings option. First, we'll look over the video options. You can change the resolution of your game to a higher resolution. Just remember that you have to have a good video card as these games are going to be a lot more demanding because they are using 3D acceleration. It is important when playing games online that your frame rate is consistent. Otherwise, it can lead to a bad experience for the other player. I would suggest using the show FPS counter to ensure games are running at their intended frame rate. There are also filtering options as well to consider. Just be sure to make a note of the original settings before you make major changes. Next, let's take a look at the controller options. If you have connected your controller, then it should be present the minute you select the controls option. Select map next to the controller. Unlike the other two emulators, the Dreamcast and the arcade system have different button mappings. Once you have selected the system, then it's just a matter of mapping your preferred buttons. Test your buttons to make sure they are correct, and you're basically all set to go online and start playing with other people. Click on the user icon to put yourself into online status, and from there you can either start sending out an invite to players in a specific game, or wait for someone to invite you. For this example, I'm going to invite a player in the King of Fighters 98 channel. Once you have the player you want to invite, right click over their name and select challenge. With most fighting games, you have the option to request a certain number of matches. A first of five is usually a preferred choice, so that's the option I'll go with. If the invite was sent, then you'll see a confirmation in the chat box of the channel. Sometimes a player may not respond, and if so, you always have the option to cancel the invite at any time. You will also be notified if a player declines the invite. Always keep in mind that players can be in other channels, and even if they are in the same channel, they may not want to play. You can also request invites through the chat, and you never know, you may just get an invite. If you do get an invite, a notification will come up in addition to an alert sound. Choose Accept, and this should start the game. You may be prompted to allow access to Fightcade and the emulator on the Windows firewall, so just make sure you choose Allow Access. If everything is working, then you should be able to start playing and having fun. Once you have ended a game with someone, the replay becomes available after and you can select it in the link in the chat room, which will immediately reopen the emulator and start playback. If you watched my previous video about setting up your PC for couch play, then you might be wondering if you can navigate Fightcade with a controller. While Fight K currently doesn't have direct support for controllers, Flightcast Dojo's developer created a script which you can download and give a try. I provided the link in the comment section below. To download the script, click the green button and go to download. Make sure you have closed Fightcade. You will need an application like WinRAR to install the script. Add the script in the required location. After you have confirmed the script is in the correct location, reopen Fightcade and you should get a confirmation that the controller support is working to the bottom right. You may have to wait a few seconds before the controller actually starts to respond. 
Fight Kid is definitely an application that I recommend anyone with a PC or even a handheld like the Steam Deck take advantage of. It has been in development for over 10 years and I can't give enough praises to developers who have spent all their free time to bring an application like this to fruition. I certainly hope you enjoy all the games this application has to offer with a willing participant. If you found this video and other ones like this that I have created on the channel to be helpful, then I would greatly appreciate a like and maybe a subscribe. Doing this continues to encourage me to create more content and I really can't thank those of you who have already done so enough for your support. For now, this is The Core, your entertainment techie, signing out.